Today I'm going to be covering something that's been on my mind for the last couple of years and that's getting my front wheel bearings greased and my brake slide bolts. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. Ford recommends that on these F53 chassis, the front wheel bearings should be greased every four years or every 60,000 miles. Now our coach is just beginning to inch towards 40,000 miles, but it's nine years old. And you know what happens when grease starts to get old. It can break down and it can get cakey. And I've really been wanting to deal with this, so I'm gonna deal with it here in this video. Now, as you know, we're full timers and we don't have a house anymore. This is our house. I don't have my garage anymore. I don't have my big compressor. I don't have my big air impact guns or my sockets or any of that stuff. And heck, just these lug nuts on these wheels alone are 450 foot pounds. So just getting the lug nuts off and the wheel off would be quite a chore. Now, when we were in RGV this winter, you know, we have a winter spot down there and I was contemplating this job. So I looked into going in and getting all the tools that I would need by renting them, getting a compressor, getting a uh, air, air impact gun, my sockets, a couple of jack stands, uh, even possibly a, a multiplier uh, to get these lugs off. So as I began to think about what it would take to get all this gear together, I was like, man, this is already gonna cost me quite a bit of money. Plus I gotta go get it, then do the job here, then gather all the stuff up and take it back. And I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to outsource this job. Now you hear me all the time say, you guys can do this stuff. You can do 80 to 90% of the maintenance items on your coach, and you can. And that's the mission of our channel, is to show you step by step how to take care of 80 to 90% of the stuff your, your RV needs. But sometimes it's just better, especially on the big jobs, to just take it to a really good shop and have them do it. This is what they do all day long. They have all the tools, they have all the know-how and all that stuff. Even for me, uh, all the time it would take for me to gather all up this stuff and buy the seals and the grease and the tools and all that, I was just like, you know, even for Martin, this is a job I need to outsource to a shop that I trust. Now, you know me also that I don't let anyone touch my coach unless it's something that I can't do or it would just be better to have somebody else do it, like getting a front end alignment or having new tires put on, or in this case, having the front bearings and my uh, brake caliper slide bolts done. We're already gonna be in here doing the bearings anyway. Let's go ahead and do the uh, brake slide bolts. So what you're going to see now is me in the shop with a mechanic filming how we're going to take care of these wheel bearings. And one last thing, uh, you know me how I sometimes always mispronounce words. So as I'm commenting during the video shoot in the, in the bay, I kept calling the place Jamal's, not Jamal's. You know, you've seen me do this before. Joni has. Because sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my brain and I don't say stuff right. You've seen that happen a lot, right? I have. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started. Let's go into the shop. And when this uh, process is all over, I'm going to have some final thoughts and what this job costs. So here we go. So this is Jamal's Auto and Truck Service Company. Uh, they are north in the northern part of Houston, uh, right around 1960 and Aldine Westfield area. And I'll tell you, man, these guys are just awesome. The owner's name is Roy. I think he had like eight or nine different shops. Uh, he's down to one now. Uh, he's kind of working on retirement. He has 13 bays here, and these are all big bays. In fact, look here. You can see there's another motorhome right there that's pulled in here to get some work done. But I can tell you, uh, these mechanics really, really know what they're doing. So we're here at Jamal's and we're getting ready to pull the front tires and rims. And uh, out of all these lug nuts, we have three tapered lug nuts to center the rim onto the hub. And uh, that's a really important thing to do. So he's gonna remove these lug nuts and pull these wheels. And then we're gonna get further into getting the calipers off and pulling the bearings. 
I thought I'd also show you guys the difference between these lug nuts. These are the OEM lug nuts, and these are the tapered ones. I have three of these and five of these, but you can kind of see the difference there. These help center the rim onto the hub. Before you put in the other five of these, it gets that mixture that that rim and tire are perfectly centered before you put these on. You can also see what they did is they jacked the uh, motorhome up and they've got jacks uh, on either side of the front axle so the coach is nice and stabilized and even as they work on the front end. So you can see here he's already pulled off the front rim and tire and also my centromatic ring. Another thing I'm noticing here with a good mechanic, you see how organized he is, how he's keeping the bolts and the lugs and everything all separated and neat. Not instead of just throwing everything in one pan. That's a real good sign of a good mechanic. So he's getting ready now to pull the brake calipers off the rotor. This is another really good trick. When you pull those brake pads off, you don't have to break the lines or bleed the brakes. You just hang them and set them off to the side so you can start working on the the bearing part you can also see he's got a real well equipped toolbox look at that man i wish i could carry something like this on the coach <laughs> but that would be a weight problem but he's he's got everything he needs right in here now that the brake pads are out of the way now he's going to remove the main axle nut and now he's got the nut off This is not going to be for the faint of heart. That's probably about, what, 40, 50 pounds? Yeah, around 50. Yeah. So this is really why I brought this in. This, the Ford Specs, is to repack the bearings um, every four years or 60,000 miles. Well, our coach is going on 10 years old, and it has 37,000 miles. And I was really concerned that maybe we didn't have the mileage, but that grease is 10 years old. And you can see down in here, there's the inner race. He'll pull all that out and we'll show you what that looks like. I was uh, concerned that grease might have gotten cakey. It's not going to be uh, lubed correctly. And if that starts to burn, and then I'd be looking at replacing the spindle and everything. So it's just a really good idea to have this done. I feel like I'm past due. We'll see what the races and the bearings look like in a minute. Does it bother you me sitting here filming this? Okay. We're looking at the inner race right here. And to me, from this, at, at this point, it looks really good. I see a little tiny discoloration right there, but that's pretty normal wear. When we pull these off to uh, repack them, we're certainly going to inspect them real close and make sure that they are in, within spec. And like he said, if they were needed to be replaced, we're going to replace them. But from what I'm seeing right here, I don't think they're going to need to be replaced. But we'll get a better look in a minute. So he's cleaning the inner race in the hub area there. We've already looked at them. The races are good. The bearings are good. So he's taking some emery cloth and just lightly polishing the uh, spindle. The bearings look good. The races look good. I'm going to show you in a minute how he packs those. But he looked at me and asked me, did you bring your own seals? <laughs> And uh, no, I did not. So he went in the office and had them go ahead and order those. And they'll be here probably within an hour or so by the time he gets done with the other side. But this is something that he does when he uh, redoes the bearings also. At first, I was kind of surprised when Taylor asked me, uh, did you bring your own? Did you bring the seals? Are you furnishing them? And I was like, hmm, no, I didn't. But as I got to thinking about it, I realized what probably happened there is Roy knows that I run a maintenance YouTube channel and he probably thought, you know, Martin probably already brought his seals with him. So he probably told Taylor, ask Martin if he brought his own seals. That was kind of cool. So this is an old machine that they've used and this is how they pack the bearings. This is a different grease than came from the factory. It's going to be a high temp grease and I've never seen this kind of machine before. So this is going to be interesting. But he just tightens it down. Look at that. Look, look how that squeezes through all that. That is really cool. And he said that after that, he'll even do, uh, he'll pack it himself by hand. But that machine just squeezed it all in through there. That is really cool. Now he's putting the other bearing in there, cinches it down. 
and it just pushes. I know we can't see too well here, but that is really cool. I've never seen that. That really ensures that you get that grease all inside those bearings. So this side is all ready to go. It's been emery cloth. We're waiting for the seals. The race is over here being cleaned in the hub. And he's also, I asked him about this since he had to pull the brakes off, these brake caliper slide bolts right here. While he's got everything out, he's gonna go ahead and grease those up too. These are also called brake caliper slide pins. Taylor called them slide bolts, but either way works. But this was a really good opportunity to grease these bolts. The calipers, as they move in and out, they need, to, they need those pins or bolts to really move freely. But over time, through road debris and salt on the roads and, all kind, and, and not being exercised, uh, they can get corroded and they can actually bind up those pads on the rotor. And when those calipers go in and out, they'll, they won't squeeze evenly. So you start getting uneven wearing on the pads and sometimes it'll even increase friction on the rotor and you get high heat, your pads begin to wear out more often and so on. Usually you grease those bolts when you do a brake job. That's, that's when you should do that. But we already had all this stuff all torn apart and so we're gonna do that too. So now what he's gonna do is just go to the other side and duplicate that. So the mechanic's gonna give a little word here. We're on the passenger side now, and it's a little bit different than the driver's side. So in his words, he's gonna explain what he's seeing here. Basically, you have like wear on the inside of this bearing. Well, this is supposed to stay in place over this. So whenever you have it torqued down, it should stay tight over that. But this should stay in place, and this is the only spark to turn. But this one was not quite torqued, and so it was both turning. And with them both turning, it burned up the inside edge like that. But once we get it torqued back tight, that'll be okay because the outer cage of the bearing is fine and there's no pitting or anything. He'll once again take some emery cloth. He'll work on that spindle. He looked at the bearings themselves, and uh, he feels like they're going to be fine. They'll repack them and then he'll torque them correctly on the spindle and they should be just fine. And this side also, uh, just like the other, will also get a new, uh, what is that, a, a, a wiper seal? Wheel seal. A wheel seal. So this was another great discovery on the passenger side. Uh, just to recap what he said, when, when this whole assembly was done at the factory, because this has never been done before on this coach, the, that particular side wasn't uh, torqued quite right. And what was happening is the outer race and the inner race were spinning. Not all the time, but you could tell that intermittently that inner race would slip and turn and slip and turn. And over thousands of miles that heat would build up and that's what showed that burnished mark on the end of the spindle. There was a little bit of uh, burnishing inside the inner race too. We looked at the spindle and we looked at the race and we're like, you know, there's no pitting, there's no real damage here, but we're gonna polish this all up. And when we put it back together, we're gonna put it at the right torque to make sure that that inner race is snug and it doesn't turn. Again, I was just thinking to myself, man, I am so glad that I decided to do this now. I mean, if I would have went another year or two, another 10,000, 15,000 miles on this thing, it could have damaged or destroyed that bearing and hurt the spindle. Now I asked uh, Taylor if there was damage to that spindle can you just remove those and turn them like you would a rotor on a, on a brake job? He said no you can't turn these. You have to totally take it off and, and replace it with a new one. They don't have a tolerance where you can you know shave it and make it smooth and take off that damage there. You cannot turn these. I was again so relieved that I'm finally getting this job done. That was a, that was a great eye opener. So glad we caught that. So putting everything back together uh, is just basically the reverse process of this whole thing. And I didn't film that. After we had everything disassembled and I showed you all these different things that we ran into and how to repack the bearings and everything, I thought, you know, I know how it is when I'm working on something and someone's staring over my shoulder. I don't care for that much. And I didn't want to become a pest you know, with him. So I said, you know, Taylor, that's great, man. I don't need to finish uh, watching you do the reverse process. Taylor, the mechanic, is the grandson of the owner. But Taylor also owns a motorhome. He owns an Atasca and he lives in it. He's a motorhome guy too. So if you take your coach to uh, Jamail's, I would recommend Taylor. He's very conscientious, a great guy too. So what did this cost me? Well, I wrote it down because I don't want to get this wrong. <laughs> Too many numbers to remember. From the time they took the coach and took it into the bay and pulled it out for me to pay, 
was four hours and 15 minutes. Roy quoted me over the phone, the cost would be about $300 a wheel. So that would have been around 600 bucks plus tax. He said it may vary a little bit depending on, you know, if they run into anything. But I thought, man, 300 bucks a wheel, I am really good with that. So this job, it took a little bit more time than that was allocated. And they had to buy two seals because I didn't furnish them because again, he probably thought, yeah, Martin's gonna bring his own seals. So with a little bit of extra labor charge, the, that cost was $630 for both wheels, plus two seals at $75 each, plus tax, came to a total of $850.96, which was $425 a tire. I know they marked these up, but you know what? They gotta make a living too. And besides, they let me go in there and film so I was totally good with the 850 bucks. And, you know, Joni and I, we budgeted for that. You know, it was one of those things that came out of that little emergency fund, you know, things that pop up and you want to get it done. So, you know, it wasn't like a big surprise. We budgeted for it. So after we paid, Joni and I jumped in the coach and we went up north on 45 to the light duty, heavy duty truck tire company that I use all the time. They do all of my inspections. I buy my tires from them. They're great guys. And I pulled it in and I told them, I said, I needed to have uh, the lug nuts retorqued to 450 pounds. I just had some wheel work and both of these tires were removed. And they said, no problem. Bop, 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 bop. They retorqued them at 450. And just remember guys, anytime you dismount a tire or, and a rim for any reason, and, you, and all those lugs come off, and they put the lugs back on, drive it for about a 50 miles, 75 miles, somewhere in there, take it to a shop and have them, or bring it back to where who did the work and have them retorqued again. You wanna do that, it's important to do. I'm a happy camper. This is all done. It took four and a half hours to do, and I'm not gonna have to worry about this job for years and years and years. If you wanna see all the upgrades that I did to our chassis, over the years we've had our coach, you can go to our playlist down there. And I'll put a link in the description text and it'll show you all the upgrades that I did, which I just released a video on. So you gotta check that out if you're interested in that type of thing. Oh, and don't forget to use our Amazon store. I'll put that link also down there in the description text to get all your maintenance gear, your RV gear, or anything you need. Even if it's not in our store, you can still use our link, go to the store, fill it up with whatever stuff you need, put it in the cart and check out. It's a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you, Joni, for making these videos and helping the RV community. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. This is how I took care of greasing our front bearings and our brake caliper slide bolts. I got this thing martinized. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.